Hello and welcome to the first in my series of masterclass videos for progressions. Now these videos are intended for people that have been through the tutorials and want to know a little bit more uh, in depth about how the program works and some of the advanced features. The first thing I want to discuss today is the ability to remote control progressions using MIDI. Now I'm running in standalone mode here so we can uh, show you how this is going to work. And I have uh, a number of chords already um, already created in my chord palette. Now I'm going to bring up the internal MIDI keyboard to show you uh, this. But normally you'd be running under a host and you would have an external keyboard connected. This is just for ease of use. Now another reason for uh, running in standalone mode is that the pop-up keyboard, the first two octaves at least, have uh, markings on there telling you what incoming MIDI notes trigger what. So as you can see here, the bottom 18 MIDI notes select chord pads uh, 1 to 18. Now by default, MIDI control is turned off. And if I try and press notes on this keyboard, to try and change the actual chord pad uh, you'll see that nothing actually happens uh, that is because you need to turn on this MIDI input button here now when the MIDI input button is active notes 0 to 23 control various parameters of progressions and uh, as you can see now we can change pad just by pressing notes and if we change to the arpeggiator, you'll see that while we hold the note down, the arpeggiator will play. And that's regardless of whether the host transport is running or not. Same goes for the strummer, and we can uh, flick between those till our heart's content. Now, if you take a look at this pop-up keyboard, you'll notice there are actually three notes here that control the uh, block chords, arpeggiator and strummer. And uh, if the transport is not running, you can press these notes to immediately change the play mode. Now, immediately above that, you'll see uh, six notes uh, in blue, uh, TB1 to 6, which don't appear to be doing anything. And that's because we need to be in extended MIDI mode by long pressing the MIDI, the MIDI input button uh, in order to uh, uh, extend the range of uh, controls up to the first three octaves. So now extended MIDI is on, you can see that those uh, TB1 to 6 control the actual uh, arpeggiator tab, or which pattern is currently selected. Now once progressions transport is running, or the host transport is, con is running, controlling progressions, then uh, any uh, pad changes, incoming pad changes, or uh, play mode changes, or tab uh, pattern tab changes will be queued until the next measure they don't happen immediately and that means you can actually uh, um, uh, uh, queue those in advance now the next thing I want to look at is a new feature added to 1.04 now suppose you have created a song and you have a whole song structure created here and uh, you want like a permanent copy of this song structure for reference then uh, what you can do now is you can export that whole song structure as a PDF document and to do that if you go to the main menu and select export song and then select uh, export song as PDF you'll be asked for a name and then you can just hit the export button now this document starts with the conductor track and then lists all the different song parts, the chords and the lengths that those chords are played. And then uh, a little bit later we've got individual uh, chords uh, and uh, the notes that make up those, those chords just in case you made modifications to them. Now this is already saved to the exports folder but if you want to save it elsewhere you can hit the exports button at the bottom of the page. Now another new feature introduced into 1.04 is the ability to export uh, a song or part of a song to MIDI for use within other applications. So again if we look at uh, song mode um, we could uh, use full song if we want to export the full song or we could actually pick a individual song part and in this case I'm going to pick the outro I'm going to go to the main menu I'm going to pick export song and choose export song as MIDI. 
Now when you pick an option you'll be asked whether you want to start recording now and we, we do so let's go and record now. You'll hear that part play back in its entirety uh, and in the meantime it's capturing all the MIDI output and when it's finished you get this dialog appear. Now at this point the uh, MIDI is copied to the clipboard so you can paste that in another package if you wish. Alternatively, if you've got a MIDI package that supports drag and drop, uh, like I have here, we can drag and drop that MIDI from uh, by just dragging that icon into Helium and letting go. And that MIDI will be imported. Now there are often times when you want to back up maybe presets or app or strum patterns or even uh, exported song structures from uh, in PDF format to your PC for safekeeping. And to do that you need to run in standalone mode and press the web transfer button at the bottom of the screen. Now when this pop-up appears you have to choose what you want to back up. So in this case I'm going to back up my exported PDF files to the PC. So press the exports button and you'll get a URL here which you can type in your uh, web browser on your Mac or PC. Now if I pop over to my uh, Mac desktop and uh, I've launched Safari and if I type in the URL that was provided to us from Progressions uh, you'll see when I press enter we've got a list of, of exported files and I can click on the little downward arrow to the left of that file to download and uh, I can preview that on my, uh, on my Mac. Now you can equally as well uh, drag files back into this window and web transfer will copy files the other way if you so wish. Now there's another nice new feature that's been added to 1.04 and this uh, is when you are editing a chord. So in this instance if I select the chord A and hit the edit chord button you'll notice now on the, on the left there's now a drop down arrow and when we press that it reveals a chord detection bar. Now if I try and add a note here and it doesn't detect the chord the detection bar just uh, empties but uh, in some cases there might be more than one chord detected and that's because different chords often contain the same note so it's up to you to choose which name you want to assign back to the pad. Now after you try and assign a chord name to back to the chord pad you might notice the little chevron in the top left corner telling you the chord's modified and you may even notice grey notes within that chord and that's because that chord is not in the ideal position. Uh, so pressing the reset chord button uh, will, will, will get rid of those. So that's the new chord recognition feature. Now I want to take a look at the uh, ARP and strum sequencer and another new addition, the continuous pattern button. Now as I play back uh, this uh, arpeggio here, you'll notice that although it's 32 beats in length, it only plays up to beat 16 and then reverts back to beat 1. Now the reason for that is that the measure length is only 4 beats, so after 4 beats uh, that uh, pattern is reset back to the beginning. If we extend the measure length to 8 beats it will play on and be on beat 16 and uh, loop round all 32 beats. But you may not want pattern switching every 8 beats, you might want it to switch every 4 and the pattern just to continue. So the solution is to enable this continuous uh, pattern on chord change and when this is enabled um, even though the measure length is set to 4 you'll see that this pattern uh, keeps um, uh, uh, looping uh, to its natural uh, pattern length and as you can see uh, as I change chord here it has no effect on the looping of that pattern. Now this is something that you may want and it's something that you may not but you can uh, decide that for yourself. Now the great thing about this is it can also be used as part of song mode and it is applied as a style to a song. To demonstrate this I've got a song here with two parts and they've got exactly the same four chords in each part. The difference is I'm going to take part one and apply a style with the continuous um, pattern button turned off and I'm going to apply a style to the first element of the chorus with the uh, pattern button turned on. 
Now if I select this button and then uh, tap and hold on the first element of this song, you'll see that the continuous uh, button turns off. And if I flick back to the chorus and do the same, you'll see the button turns back on again. So let's now switch to the conductor track and add a verse and a chorus to this. And uh, what we're going to do is long press on the conductor button to convert that into a full song. Now if we tap on uh, element 1 and tap on ele element 5, you'll see that button turning on and off. And if we play that back, we can see how that sounds within the song. And, uh, and we can see that the app uh, in the first four chords is just looping when it's 16 and in the second four it's continuously playing. So I think you'll agree that's a nice new addition to uh, song mode. Now while we're here in song mode there's a couple of new options that I'd like to talk to you about. Uh, the first one is the ability now to duplicate a selection. Now if you select a, a range of uh, chords and hold down the copy button it now duplicates the selection. Now if I tap on a chord header it moves the play cursor to that particular chord and if I hit the uh, clear button it will add an empty chord in its place. Now because I've got a selection there of four individual chords if I long press that clear button it will then clear the selection rather than just that one element that is highlighted. Now the great thing about a conductor track and individual parts is that the parts are unchanged and I can just uh, long press the conductor track again to get back to my original song. Now to finish off this video I want to talk about the uh, sounds that are available when in standalone mode or when loaded as an instrument because we only have the minimum of, uh, uh, of sound available in these cases because we expect you to uh, drive external instruments. Now progression ships with a single sound font and that contains a single instrument but if you go into instrument settings uh, you can actually load custom sound fonts that you've uh, uploaded to uh, progressions via web transfer and uh, if that uh, sound font is allows multiple instruments then we can switch instruments from within this window. Now ordinarily you would load progressions as a MIDI plugin within the host and uh, if you did that uh, you wouldn't see these options because MIDI plugins do not support audio. Now progressions can be loaded as a MIDI instrument and uh, the reason for that is for things like GarageBand that cannot load uh, MIDI plugins directly. So you can load progressions and you can use the internal sound as a guide to, while you're recording the chords and then drag that chord track over to uh, other GarageBand instruments. Now you can hit the web transfer button at the bottom, at the bottom of this window and select uh, sound fonts. Uh, at which point then you can connect your web browser and drag and drop sound fonts into the window and they will become available within progressions. So that's just about it for this first masterclass video. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and thumb up this video if you liked it. See you again next time.